Howdy there folks and welcome into this video. It is three stocks I'm buying now, August 2021 edition. This is my favorite series I do on the channel each and every month where we're gonna get into three stocks that I love for the upcoming month. I'm gonna tell you why I love these stocks for the long term. These are not some kind of day trades or something like that. I'm planning on holding these stocks for years to go in the future. I'm gonna tell you why I think they are at great prices and why I am buying them. And then I'm gonna potentially tell you why I think these stocks can 2X or more in the coming years. And on top of those three stocks, I'm also gonna give you two bonus stocks in this video as well, in which are stocks that I'm also thinking about potentially buying. I'm doing some more research actively. So hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, that's really all I got for an intro here today. Don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it in a huge way, guys. That helps us get some reach on YouTube in a massive way. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here as always. And I hope you appreciate me letting you guys know these stocks that I'm buying. If you want to check out the website, if you haven't got to check it out yet, it's financialeducationjeremy.com. We have some unbelievably free resources on that website. Definitely check that out if you haven't. I'll put that as a pin comment. It's financialeducationjeremy.com. And uh, yeah, we have a ton of free resources to use on that website. And lastly, okay, this is the first time I've ever mentioned this in any of my YouTube videos today, okay? Listen, this is still in beta test mode, okay? But The Hungry Bull, it's a project Graham and Stefan and I have been working on for, for many months, as well as many other folks on the app team as well, okay? The Hungry Bull. Today, I want to do a little test, okay? I, I want to shout it out in this video here today, and I'm just going to see if we can crash the app essentially, okay? Like I said, it's still in beta test mode. We're still like uh, working out some different things as far as the app goes, but I, I really want to just give it a big shout out, and I know these videos get a ton of views every month, so I figured let's go ahead and do it. The Hungry Bull, it's our new app. It is for tracking stock prices, listening to conference calls right inside the app. We might even have a feature coming, no promises, within the next couple months where you you can actually read 10Ks and 10Qs right inside the app as well. We got a new newsletter feature. And like I said, this is the first time I've ever shouted out in any of my videos. And uh, so yeah, let, let's see what happens out there, okay? Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please leave us a review on the App Store. That would mean so much to us. A lot of people have put in a lot of work over the last few months for this. And we're just gonna make this thing better and better and better over time. It's absolutely free to use. Hope you guys enjoy that. All right, you guys, let's get into these stocks. So first one of these three stocks. It rhymes with Min, Bin, Kin, Din, and Rin. Can you guess what stock it is? Yes, it is Win Resorts. Winning Resorts, first stock up of these three stocks up here. This one has been falling a lot lately. Let's be quite clear about that, right? Market cap now is in the $11 billion range. This stock has, you know, ever since kind of the, the Rony Rona started kind of moving up and moving up, right? Those numbers started moving up. This stock has been moving down and moving down. And now it's $102 as of today's video, right? Yesterday it hit $99. It was actually under $100 just yesterday. Wynn Resorts, they have two unbelievable resort properties here in my city, Las Vegas, okay? These buildings are absolutely gargantuan. We're talking about, you know, crazy amounts of rooms, restaurants, high-end gaming, and, and they really cater to the VIP and, and the higher-end consumers. The shopping, it's unbelievable. They even have a beautiful golf course which is the only golf course on the Las Vegas Strip right behind the properties. Absolutely amazing. The company also owns a piece of land directly across from their property there. And this piece of land, no one knows what Wynn's gonna do with it. It's right across from their property. Right across the street now is a new property called Resorts World, which is quite exciting. Then right next to that has a fashion show mall that gets crazy amounts of visitors, very, very close to the Palazzo, the Venetian. And uh, if you just keep going down that road a little bit, you get to the planet down there as well, okay? And so the location's great. And, and that part of the strip is starting to really boom. So it should be interesting to see if Wynn ever ends up wanting to develop that. They bought that a few years ago for like 300 mil or so, and uh, it, it's very valuable re real estate, and by the day, it's getting more valuable, literally. And as of right now, it just has that one little beautiful uh, palm tree on there, if we can call that a palm tree, okay? Company also owns 
the Encore Boston Harbor, which is just outside of Boston. It's in Everett, Massachusetts. Unbelievable property, like nothing else in the Boston area. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, just a one of a kind property. Here's an aerial photo that shows where the property's proximity is in relation to downtown Boston. It's not that dang far at all, okay? And so that, that property will benefit from tourism coming to Boston and, and you know meetings, conferences, all those sorts of things. And also just that, that area in general, definitely a lot of folks that have money that would love to go there and do a little gaming, okay? Now let's talk about Asia. The company has a wind property and an Encore property in Macau. This is in the old part of the Koh Tai Strip. Once again, wind really caters to, let's call it the top 10% of income earners, the top 10% of the wealthy, okay? That's really wind's core customers. That's really who's staying at their properties. And guess what? When those people come to do a little gaming action, they're coming with big budgets, okay? We're talking six figures, seven figures, maybe even eight figures in a weekend in terms of what they're gaming, okay? Not small amounts at all. Then they have arguably the premier property in all of the world when it comes to gaming property called Wynn Palace, which is in the new part of the Kotai Strip. That property is absolutely unbelievable. It costs well over $4 billion to build that beast a few years ago. It's just, I mean, look at, look at that place. I mean, it's just magnificent. And then on top of that, they're gonna be adding, they're supposed to start construction in the back half of this year on what's called the Crystal Pavilions, which should be a showstopper in terms of the amount of tourism that should get. Okay, the Crystal Pavilions is gonna be amazing, and then they're gonna put another big resort tower, essentially for hotel guests right behind it, which is ingenious by Wynn, in my opinion, because that's just gonna get a ton more foot traffic over to the Wind properties and just give even more reason to stay at the Wind Palace than ever before. And guess what? The Crystal Pavilions is gonna have a ton of art and different things like that in it, okay? And guess guess like the, the type of people that really care about art and looking at exhibits and all those sorts of things, okay? Wealthier folks, right? The top 10% of, of income earners, the top 10% of wealthy. And so if they're there, why not stay at the Wind Palace? Why not eat at those restaurants? Why not do a little gaming action, okay? So it's absolutely brilliant by win and guess what Macau for years has been talking about they want to get away from just being known as a gambling place where you go to gamble your money and so this is win also getting in good with the Macau government even better than ever and you know so brilliant brilliant decision by win like I said construction on that should start in the back half of this year win bet and probably toward more like November December in my opinion okay they also own win bet which win bet is their online play as far as uh, getting bigger and bigger into the online gaming space we know more and more states are legalizing online gaming and giving away you know licenses and things like that Colorado Indiana Michigan New Jersey Tennessee Virginia all for win bet now and they're adding more and more in the future as well balance sheet wise let's talk about this so the company has roughly three billion dollars in cash now that cash number should build as a company gets back to profitability let's keep that in mind but as of right now the latest quarter they had reported they had about three billion cash and they had roughly about 12 billion dollars in debt okay this is very very important so if we go ahead and take 12 billion dollars in debt minus this take out the cash 3 billion so essentially you really need to add an extra 9 billion dollars onto the market capitalization of this company to really get what we're truly paying for this business because keep in mind that debt has to be paid down over time right it's 9 billion dollars so I'm gonna go ahead and take 9 billion add it to 11 billion dollar market cap so really what I am truly paying for this company as of today is really actually 20 billion dollars dollars okay it's really not 11 billion in my opinion it's really 20 billion but keep in mind okay remember all those properties i just showed you there wind palace the wind and encore properties in the old part of the kotai strip encore boston harbor that piece of land on the las vegas strip in their unbelievable vegas properties right remember they get to depreciate those properties over time but also let's just think about this okay if you wanted to just build it like literally if you were like i want to buy the land uh, a very comparable land right and build those same exact properties here today you're looking at at least 22 to 24 billion dollars to replicate that I'm paying what I believe is about $20 billion for this company and to just literally just buy that land and build those same exact properties, you're looking at 22 to 24 billion, right? And that doesn't give any value to the employee base, which is really what uh, part of what makes Win very, very special. That doesn't give any value to the brand, which is absolutely amazing. That doesn't give any value to Win Bet or the clientele that Win has, which is really what drives the business. That doesn't give that any value. 
just talking about pure land and build cost, you're 22 to 24 billion if you wanna to try to replicate what Wynn has built there, okay? Unbelievable. Now, this is a business that has proven the ability in good times to make 700 mil plus of net income. We're not talking about revenue. We're talking about bottom line. We're talking about profitability. We're talking about net income, okay? I believe without any doubt in my mind, this company is going to get back to those sorts of numbers 2022 through 2024. I believe each of those years, the company will be doing anywhere from $500 million to $1 billion of net income on the bottom line, which if the company does numbers like that, that puts it at about a 24, if you're talking about 500 mil net income, you're at about a 24 PE for 2022. If the company does a billion, which I definitely think is a, a very much a possibility with the huge pent up demand for travel there's gonna be over the coming years, right? I think that puts it at about a 12. PE there, okay, which, you know, we're looking obviously on a forward basis, which is not incredibly expensive at all. And what gives me that sort of confidence? The company's done it before, and there's more of a pent up demand for travel over the next few years than there's ever been before. I've seen it in Vegas over the past few months. I live in Vegas, I'm boots on the ground here, okay? I've never seen Vegas as busy as Vegas has been over the last several months, okay? bottom line. And so I'm looking at this pent up travel demand and that's going to last through the, at least the next several years in my opinion. Okay. Now the Rony Rona has been going up again. So this is something very important to keep in mind, guys. This is going to likely hurt business in the short term. If these numbers keep rising and rising, which probably are, right? We might get a little dip here in August and then, you know, might see a big reacceleration in September, October, November into December, like we did last year. It's definitely very, very much a possibility, okay? That's gonna likely hold back business a little bit in Vegas, right? Especially as those numbers climb, all of a sudden you get restrictions like mask is all of a sudden a required thing again, right? And I know people don't wanna hear that, you know, we're gonna to have to go back, but you know, we're going back, okay? That's all I'm gonna say about that, okay? You look at the numbers, you look at the way things are climbing, it's gonna hold back Vegas a bit, and guess what? It's gonna hold back Macau even more in the short term. Let's keep in mind these are short term effects. It will hold back Macau, no doubt. Macau's extra, extra serious on this stuff, much more so than Vegas, okay? But that is short term stuff. The long term, uh, you know, thing is still there, okay? 2022 through 2024 is about to be crazy for the travel industry, in my opinion, okay? Under $120, I look at the stock and it's a very good deal. Whenever the stock's under $120, it's a good deal. Under $100 is a great deal for Winstock and under $80 a share is a load the boat situation for me in regards to Winstock. It's always been. And also keep in mind, obviously, you know, when it comes to Winstock, I like making the gains in the stock price, but the dividend, remember, Win is known as being a dividend company. They've had to take away the dividend, obviously, over the past, you know, uh, let's say a couple years because of the Roni Rona, right? But that dividend, in my opinion, will be back at some point in 2022. I don't know when, but uh, no pun intended, but it will be back in 2022, in my personal opinion, probably in the back half of the year, if I had to guess. It probably won't be a huge number right from the go, but likely the dividend will be back, which will be a huge thing for the stock and the stock price, because this is known as a dividend stock, and a lot of folks consider the stock a great stock when it can pay dividends, okay? So I even went outside and took a picture for you guys. There you go, okay, there's the strip right there. And uh, winning Encore, I love, I love that stock, okay? Let's get to the next one up here, number two of these three stocks. This one rhymes with Broer, Malaire, Prefer, Jamer. Can you guess it? It is uh, a steal the deal stock, and it is Corsair Gaming CRSR. Next one up here, under $30 a share, significantly off its 52 week high, okay? This was a stock that was topping out $40, $50. And I could make a very strong argument right now that if this stock was in the $40, $50 range today, it would still be a very good deal. It might not be a steel deal like it is at 29, but even in if this stock was $40 to $50 a share here today, I can make a very strong argument that it's a good dang deal. Mark cap on this one's 2.75 billion right now. Now I do have bad news here, okay? I mean, I'm prepping the video. I go to Corsair.com, and of course, right when I happen to be doing this, the website's down. It figures, man, it figures. But anyways, Corsair is huge in the gaming industry. They have 
unbelievable reviews. I mean, unbelievable reviews. You look at their products on Amazon. You're, yeah, man, do they have a lot of products, okay? And all their products pretty much out there all rank like four stars, 4.5 stars. You're gonna see a ton of that. People love their products. Very, very good quality and people love it, okay? They also own Elgato, which is huge in streaming. They own Origin and they own Scuff, which makes their own custom controllers, okay? Elgato is something to be very, very excited about. This is a, the second most important business to them in my personal opinion, which is huge in, in stream decks and anything you need streaming, like basically lighting, stream decks, uh, capture cards, all those sorts of things. Like this is what Elgato does. And they just launched a new product here a couple weeks ago called the Elgato Face Cam. And this is their first entrance into the huge and massively growing webcam market. And this has huge potential for the company. They just launched microphones last year, which is important. But, but let's be honest, webcams were even more important. And I've looked at a lot of the reviews, and a lot of the reviews are very, very good for the Elgato face cam overall, okay? I've even seen, you know, those versus like a DSLR and a mirrorless camera, things like that. Seeing a lot of very good things out there for what it is, which is essentially a webcam, okay? So very, very happy about that. That is a, a potential, you know, nine figure plus business there in itself, okay? Keep that in mind. That is one of the drivers of Logitech business over the past year or two has been those dang webcams because they sell, okay? Obviously they've sold better than ever the past two years because of running Rona, but you know, they, they sell very, 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 very well. Okay. Now Corsair gaming, like I said, you know, $2.7 billion mark cap or so on this company forward P of 15. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to Corsair gaming, you got to think to yourself, is, is, is this the best for, for Corsair gaming is, is essentially the time period we're in is this as good as it gets ever for, for Corsair gaming. In my opinion, no, in my opinion, gaming will continue to grow over the next decade. In my opinion, streaming will continue to grow over the next decade. In my opinion, Corsair gaming will continue to use cash flows to buy out more businesses to grow even more and launch more products. Like they just launched a face cam that has potential to be its own, you know, nine figure business, right? That is going to continue to play out, in my opinion, over the coming years, and Corsair Gaming will build their revenues and build their net income. Some years are going to be great years for Corsair. They might have, you know, 20%, 30% type revenue growth. Some years, will, they might grow 5 to 10%. But in my opinion, this company will grow exponentially over the next 10 years, all right? And at a 15 forward P is incredibly cheap, in my opinion, for this company. Now, let's talk about the short-term overhang on this stock, okay? The Eagle Tree capital situation. So Eagle Tree supposedly selling out Corsair shares, okay? And this supposedly has been something that's been playing out. It's hard to get a lot of the, the, the real details around this, like exactly how much Eagle Tree wants to sell when they're selling, exactly how much they've sold already, when they're going to stop selling. But needless to say, it is a short-term negative thing for the stock price. It means absolutely nothing absolutely nothing for the underlying business fundamentals, but for the stock price in the short term, it is a, 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 a problem. Let's just put it like that, right? One is if they're selling, puts a bunch of selling pressure out there. Two is people are worried about that. So some folks are looking at it on Wall Street and like, well, why do I have to buy now? Because Eagle Tree might just sell anyways. Me, I try not to worry about all that, okay? I'm trying to buy companies I love for the long term at great prices that I think are extremely attractive. And Corsair Gaming is extremely attractive at its current prices. So regardless if Eagle Tree stops selling, keeps selling, I don't care, okay? I'm willing to hold Corsair Gaming for years to go in the future. I think I'm gonna make 2X, 3X, 4X on my money on this one, right? So, you know, regardless if, if next month Corsair is trading at 30, 29, 28, 32, 27, it really doesn't make a dang difference, okay? If you look at the growth expected for this company, 18.9% current year, next year expected to only grow 6.7%. Something I like about that 6.7% growth, right? is expectations are extremely low for next year. And so if there's any sort of upside, which you know in the gaming space, all of a sudden you can have crazy upside out of nowhere, right? A game pops off and all of a sudden there, there's huge excitement in the gaming space. Like that's something no one ever factors in, right? If all of a sudden that happens, all of a sudden next thing you know, Corsair is growing at 15, 
that, right? And all of a sudden people are like, whoa, you know, and so this is something to keep in mind, but regardless, it is a growth company, nice growth company with great brands they own that continue to grow these brands all over the world, a Ford PF15, a balance sheet I appreciate, and so overall, I love Corsair Gaming. I think this stock is gonna make me a lot of money, and I mean a lot of money over the next three to five years. I think this stock can easily be a 60, if not a $100 plus stock in the future, based upon the type of growth I see for this company over the coming years, and on top of that, it's already significantly undervalued. I feel like this company should be trading at a 25 to maybe even a 28 forward P as of right now, considering the type of growth this company has for years to go in the future, how strong their brands are, what type of market we're in right now. To, to, not, to be trading at a forward P of 15 is laughable. It should be trading at a 25 to 28 now, okay? So yeah, Corsair Gaming, okay? Now let's get into these two maybe stocks that I'm doing some research on. They, they could potentially be buys for me in August, and then we'll get into the last of the three for sure buys, okay? So the first one of these two maybe stocks is actually eBay, which eBay is a stock I owned in the past when they were trying to turn around the business. And it was a stock that interests me as I thought they could have a pretty good chance of um, you know turning around that business. And I made some money on a short term. I took a profit on it, okay? And I really shouldn't have because the business has, has has just actually really turned around good. I've used a product recently and I'm much more impressed than I was years ago using the app, notifications, things like that. They're benefiting big time right now from the collectibles kind of booming again, right? And uh, that's def the, like they're the premier player when it comes to, I mean, you know, if I'm gonna go look at like Pokemon cards, uh, right? Guess what I'm doing it through? eBay first and foremost, right? And so that's been a huge boom for the company. It's supposed to grow 17% revenues this year, another 6.6% .6 next year. But also I've tracked eBay's pricing over time. And a lot of times eBay, undercuts Amazon and other, other companies out there, not because eBay's necessarily directly doing it, it's just the sellers on eBay a lot of times will undercut where these products will be sold anything anywhere else. I've tracked this on different you know, camera products and equipment and stuff like that. And I've, you know, I'm not even talking about used products, which eBay's huge with buying used stuff, right? I'm talking about brand new. Okay, so this is something to keep in mind. I think eBay is really, really an intriguing company that's you know, turning things around. I'm gonna do more research on it. The stock's trading high. When I say trading high, I'm not talking about on a valuation basis. I'm just talking about on a 52-week high. It's near its 52-week high. You know me, I like to buy when a stock's significantly off its 52-week high usually, okay? Not when it's right up there, okay? But I gotta do some work in eBay, see, see what's going on there. Obviously, they had the break of PayPal. By the way, PayPal numbers came out today and uh, they, they were hurt basically by this, this whole breakup with, with eBay, and that was something that was specifically cited in there, okay? The second stock of my maybe stocks here, and then we'll get into the last stock of the for sures, is Smile Direct Club, SDC. $6.88 today. It's been trading at $6 pretty consistently recently. $2.6 billion mark cap. It, you know, they're growing in the dental space, right? And uh, I mean, this company's just had such a bad time since it went public. This went public, it was a you know 17 to maybe even like $19 stock. And you know, we're, we're all this time later and the stock trades at 688. It's had a horrible time being a public company. And I'm trying to take a peek at this one and see if there's something here with this one, where maybe this can grow back to being a $17 stock, $19 stock in the future. And so I got some more research to do there, but it's definitely something I'm considering in the month of August of 2021, okay? guys, let's get into the last stock of the for sure's up here. Number three of three. This one rhymes with chef, pef, ratu, hef. Can you guess it? Yes, it is the Tattooed Chef TTCF stock trading at $19 roughly here today, okay? Now, rather than talk to you about Tattooed Chef for the next 10 to 20 minutes, okay? I want you guys to type into Google a video I put together that is insanely helpful. If you own Tattooed Chef, if you're interested in the stock, you gotta watch this video. Type in how I value TTCF stock into Google right now, or not Google, uh, YouTube, okay? and watch that video. And if you watch in the past, re-watch it, okay? That one is uh, like, like I get so many questions about Tattoo Chef and where I see the company going over time, things like that. That 14 minute and 58 second video, that answers so many questions, it's not even funny. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to smash that like button before you leave, and uh, let's try to crash a hungry bull because we get too much traffic to it, okay? It's still in beta test mode, so keep that in mind. If you enjoy it, please leave us a review. I hope you guys do enjoy it because we have spent a lot of work and time on that over the past few months. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.